What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And it is that time of year again. MLB The Show 19 is out. We are eagerly awaiting the Operation Sports full minor rosters. Those guys over at Operation Sports working hard to get those out. And once those are out, then we know what happens. It's time to start franchise. It's time to rebuild some teams. Win some championships. So today we're bringing you the top five MLB rebuilds and MLB The Show 19. The top five teams you're going to want to use to rebuild. The criteria to make this list is kind of a combination of a few things. Whether that's a poor farm system, a team that's just bad at the major league level. Um, maybe they have a couple bad contracts so they can't get out of those contracts so they have no money to sign people. Or maybe they're in a tough division with a bad roster. Like I said, it could be a combination of a lot of things. And of course, it's just my opinion. Honestly, there are plenty of other teams, probably 10 teams we could rebuild. But I wanted to keep the list down to five. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number five is going to be the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, the Blue Jays have had a rough couple seasons. Ken Giles is the best player on their team, at least MLB show rating wise. And the only one with a plus 80 overall. And so they're going to be a team with obviously now without Josh Donaldson. He's on the Braves. But taking a look at their starting pitching, and there isn't a whole lot. Marcus Stroman is kind of their top guy. But he is starting to get up there in age a little bit. He's 27. And he's only B potential. But he's 78 overall. And he's coming off a pretty bad season. His worst season of his career actually after having a pretty good 2017 after uh, he was injured a few years back but outside of him there isn't a whole lot as you can see Aaron Sanchez obviously not the pitcher they thought he was Clay Buckholz is very old their bullpen though however is pretty respectable to para leading the way there Bud Norris 34 years old but he's still gonna hit. I think he can get it done out of the bullpen and of course they have Ken Giles who they got from Houston. And he didn't have a very good season last year. Especially when he came over. But obviously he's still one of the best you know, closers in the game. So I think that's definitely going to help them out. But they do need a lot of help in the starting pitching. And then when we get to the lineup. As you can see as I go through. It's just pretty much a disaster. Honestly they might have the worst offense in baseball. Um... Just off the top of my head, can't really think of a team with a worse offense than them. When Freddie Galvis is probably your best offensive player, maybe just a smoke, you have some problems. Kevin Pillar, obviously, um, is, and Randall Gertrick are not going to, you know, they're not franchise guys. Um, looking at the prospects, they do have the third best farm system, which is why I have them at five, and they're not higher on the list. Obviously, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichetti, two infielders. And they have three other top 100 prospects. Bichetti and Guerrero are top 25 guys. And they'll most likely be up in 2019. So that's kind of why they're at five and not higher. But either way, definitely a fun team to rebuild. On to number four, and that is the Detroit Tigers. And the Detroit Tigers have been bad a couple years now. Kind of put all their eggs into one basket a few years ago. Trying to win it all. Came up short. Verlander's gone now, obviously. But they have rebuilt their farm system somewhat. Which is why they're not higher on the list. But with that said, though, they don't have a whole lot in the farm system. They just have a couple decent guys. Taking a look at their starting pitcher. Obviously, Michael Fulmer, who they got from the Mets a few years back. He did not have a great year last year. His first two seasons with them were pretty good. And he was a beast in the Mets farm system. But he had a pretty rough season last year. Going 3-12 in the ERA. Well above what you would expect from him. Uh, the rest, he's still young enough to where I think he's going to be someone you can build around. But the rest of the pitching staff is not impressive. George Zimmerman was, has not been what he was in Washington. Um, with injuries and just not playing well and their bullpen is not very good outside of Joel Jimenez and then Shane Green should not be closing games I mean that's just let's be honest he should not be closing games he's not a good 
closer, so you're going to need to do some work there if you do go with the Tigers. And offensively, it's not much better. Grayson Grainer is probably not your catcher of the future. They still have Miggy. He's still, he's still Miggy. He's still a beast. But he was injured all of last year. And that does reflect in the game. So if you play with injuries on, chances are he's probably going to get hurt. Um, really, you could do... You could keep him. You could build around him a little bit for maybe a year or two. But you're definitely going to need a new cornerstone. Which may be on the team. We'll get to that in a second. Maybe not. They did bring in Josh Harrison. But I don't see him being that great. If anything, I'd probably trade him at the deadline if you guys are bad. He's on a one-year deal. And then the rest of the team is not very great. Outside of Nick Castellanos. And that's who I was talking about who you could possibly build around. He's 27 years old. He had a really good year. Hit just under 300. 23 bombs. Drove in 89. Played 157 games. So he stayed healthy. He can play infield too if you need him to. Um, personally, I'd probably keep him in the outfield. But, like I said, he is someone you can build around. But you're going to have to go get the pieces on offense. Pitching-wise, they do have, like I said, the two top 25 prospects. Casey Mize and Matt Manning. They're both 21 years old. Right-handers. They should be good to go. But you're going to have to get some bats. Either way, though, the Tigers will also be an interesting rebuild. Number three is the Kansas City Royals on my list. And that is a combination of a few things. They obviously won the World Series in 2015 and then just kind of like got rid of everybody and have been very bad last year. They were like, they were one of the worst teams in baseball the last couple seasons and they don't have a whole lot around them. Brad Keller is a good starter. They're, he came up as a reliever. He's going to start, I believe, this year and he can definitely be someone you build around 23 years old. They got him as a B potential on the game. It'll probably be an 85, 86 or so. But not a lot there aside from him in terms of starting pitching. Um, you do have someone, I'll get to him in a second, uh, a top 100 prospect. But other than that, you know, not too great there on the pitching side of things. Same with the bullpen. Brad Boxberger, I'd probably just go with Alonzo. But either way, I don't see either of them being the long-term answer at closer. On to the offensive side of things, Salvador Perez is still there. He's still your reliable player. He doesn't... He has... His average has gone down the last, like, handful of years. But his power numbers are the best they've ever been. That's kind of how catchers are anyway. It seems like they usually kind of tend to go more power later in their careers. He's still really good defensively. But you do have a catcher in the minors... That you're going to want to bring up within a year or two. I'll get to that in a second. So you might want to move him then. But for now he will definitely be good for you. Whit Merrifield. Is probably the best player. He did a crazy. Crazy good year last year. 304. Stole 45 bases. And just was good in every stat category. Even defensively. He's someone you can build around. Aldoberto Mondesi. Still 23 years old. Got him as B potential. Second base. Stole 30 bases last year. In only 75 games. Your team's going to have some speed. Alex Gordon. I would probably try to trade him. I don't think you'll get much for him. But I think it's time for him to move on. The Royals did acquire Billy Hamilton. He did not have a great year with the Reds last year. Only hit 236. But he is still going to steal your bases. And he'll be a respectable outfielder for you. Outside of him, Jorge Bonifacio, Soler, nothing special. Soler has not been anything since he left Chicago. As far as their prospects go, like I said, they have Brady Singer, who is a top 100 prospect right-hander. CJ Melendez is that catcher you're going to want to bring up for Perez in a couple years. I wouldn't trade Perez for a few years, though. And then they have Khalil Lee, but I don't see him being too much... Either way, though, this should be a pretty fun team to rebuild as well. Also, their jerseys are sick. They're just good. They're awesome. Number two is the Baltimore Orioles. And they're probably one of the more popular teams that people are going to be picking. And it's understandable as to why. Because they are a mess. They lost Machado. And they didn't really do much. They lost Jonathan Scope as well. And, I mean, they did bring in Villar, who we'll get to in a second. But they didn't do too much outside of that. 
As for the starting rotation, Dylan Bundy, I think he's, he's 26 years old. He seems like he's been around forever, but he's still there. He's 26 years old. He's B potential. His rating is not too great. I think he's someone you could either trade or build around for at least, you know, give him a chance. It's really up to you what you want to do. But outside of him, the starting rotation is not going to be anything you want to keep around past the first year. But unfortunately, you probably won't get much for Cobb or, or you know, the rest of the rotation. As far as their bullpen goes, though, they probably have the best bullpen of the teams in this video on the list. And Michael Givens is easily the best closer, sides from maybe Ken Giles from the Blue Jays. But you're going to have to rebuild that rotation. On to the offensive side of things. Chance Sisko, he came up, didn't play too well with them in real life last year, but this is a video game, so you don't got to worry about that. He should be pretty good on the game. He's 8 potential, 65 overall. He's already 24 years old, but I think compared to who you have already there, you should probably just start him. And then the rest of the infield, aside from when we get to Villar, is not very much to talk about. Chris Davis coming off the worst year of his career. And the worst thing about him is he has four years left on a, I think like $23 million a year. So it's going to be impossible to get rid of that contract. So you're probably going to be stuck with him. Um, obviously, you could DFA him, but you can't get out of the contract. I definitely would not start him. Jonathan Villar is going to be your best player. But the problem with that is he's not going to hit for a very high average. He will steal your bases and play very good defense. But that's not going to score you a lot of runs. And then uh, they did get Rio, Ryu, uh, Rio Ruiz from the Braves. But he did not play too well for the Braves in real life. But again, luckily for you guys, it's a video game. So I'll probably do a lot better on the game for you. He's definitely someone you can build around. They signed Alcides Escobar, but he's past his prime. And the rest of the outfield now without Adam Jones is nothing uh, to brag about. As far as their prospects go, they did get Yusniel Diaz uh, in the Machado deal. And then they have DL Hall as well. Two top 100 prospects, but none of them are in the top 50. And they're both probably two or three years away. And they have one of the worst farm systems in baseball. So they're going to be a really hard team to rebuild. That's why I got them at number two. But nonetheless, if you're in it for the long haul, this should definitely be a team on your list to rebuild. I think it would be a fun project to tackle. And then the number one team to rebuild in MLB The Show 19. Surprise, surprise, Miami Marlins. And understandably so, a lot of people are going to probably rebuild these guys. But I might even do it at some point just to see how hard and how long it takes because they have some issues. Derek Jeter and the boys got their work cut out for him. Trevor Richards is someone, however, you could keep. He's 25 years old, 76 overall, B potential. Pitched not too well for them last year when he came up, but I think he's going to be probably your best bet that's already on the team because Jose Arena is... Not working out. He's 27 years old. He just never turned into the player that the Marlins thought he would be. And he's someone you're going to maybe try to throw in a deal and just kind of get rid of. Otherwise, I don't see him ever getting past the middle of the rotation. And their bullpen's not very good. They did get Sergio Romo, whose career is not what it was in San Francisco. But I think as far as where this team is, which is basically stopgap. Uh, I think he's a good answer for one year. And then on to the offense side of things, and that's where things get a little more interesting. Jorge Alfaro, they got from the Phillies. He was one of the Phillies' uh, top prospects a few years back. Uh, he's getting a little older now, but he's still respectable. And I think he could be a pretty good catcher for you guys if you do go with the Marlins. Martin Prado is interesting as well. His rating is terrible on the game, but he still has really good contact rating. So if you're playing the games, I think you can get some good use out of him. Because unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get anything for him trade-wise at deep potential 63 overall. So you might as well use him. and He can play everywhere. Starlin Castro is going to be probably your best hitter. And he's someone I like, so I would like to keep around. 
but you could probably also trade him. And then Brian Anderson is another guy you're going to want to keep if you decide to go with the Marlins. He hit 273 last year. I think he can, you know, I think he's only going to get better. A potential, uh, not something you normally will find on a lot of teams. Uh, someone like him who is MLB ready. Curtis Granderson is not going to help you guys either too much. He's not the player he used to be when he was on the Mets. I would try to trade him. I don't know if you'll get much for him, though. And then, basically, the deal with the rest of the outfield for the Marlins, they are pretty good prospects in real life, but the ratings are not very good on the game. Sierra O'Brien and Brinson. But, so I don't see them ever really getting to the point where they're going to help you too much. So you're probably going to have to find people outside of the organization or through the draft. And uh, speaking of the prospects, their biggest issue is they have one of the worst farm systems in baseball. I think it's ranked 25th and 26th. They only have two prospects in the top 100, only one in the top 50, and it's a right-handed pitcher who is probably going to end up being a reliever. So you're definitely going to have your work cut out for you with the Marlins. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you want to enjoy it, please do smash that like button down below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. And let me know down in the comments who you're rebuilding in MLB The Show 19. I'd love to hear from you and hear how your rebuilds are doing. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.